Um, my name is Michael Satterfield. My last name is spelled S-A-T-T-E-R-F-I-E-L-D. Mr. Satterfield, how are you doing today? Good, how are you? I'm good. Um, tell the jury just a little bit about yourself. Where'd you grow up and, uh, you know, what do you do for a living? Um, I grew up in Hampton and live in Beaufort and I work at Beaufort Memorial Hospital. Okay. Awesome. And court reporters taking stuff down there. I'm really known for talking fast, too, but let's, let's slow it down so they can, they can get everything uh, down. Uh, you grew up in Hampton, you said? Yes. And uh, you said, uh, where'd you work? Beaufort Memorial. Okay, and what do you do there? Work in the ER. How long have you been working there? Uh, a little over five years. Okay, and where, did you work anywhere prior to that? I did. And where'd you work? Um, the pharmacy. Pharmacy. Okay. Um, uh, who's your mom? Gloria Satterfield. Gloria Satterfield? And is your mom still with us? She's not. And uh, when did she pass? February 26, 2018. And do you have a sibling? I do. And what's his name? Brian. Uh, where'd your mom pass? Um, in the hospital. Did something happen to her? Yes. Tell the jury what happened to her. Uh, she had a trip and fall. And where did that occur? Um, I'm not sure the exact date that occurred. But where? Did uh, I'm sorry, um, at Moselle in Colleton County. Okay. Was she working for the Murdoch family? She was. And what did she do for them? Uh, she was their housekeeper, babysat for them, and anything else they needed. Babysat, whatever they needed? Yes. Housekeeper? How long did she work for them? Uh, a little over 20 years. I'm not sure the exact amount. 20 years? Yeah. Um, during that time, did you get to know the Murdoch family? I did. Um, did you get to know the defendant, Alec Murdoch? I did. Um, do you see him here in the courtroom today? I do. Can you point him out to the jury for the jury? Can the record reflect he's identified the defendant? Your mom worked for this family for 20 years, babysitting. She helped raise the children. Yes. Um, did you get to know Maggie? Uh, a little bit, yes. Uh, did you get to know Paul or Buster at all? Uh, a little bit, yes. And you got to know Alec? Right? Yes. Um, you said your mom had a trip and fall at Moselle at their property? Yes. And um, she go to the hospital? Yes. Uh, was she ever able to tell you how she tripped or anything like that? No. <laughs> How long was she in the hospital before she passed away? Uh, give and take four, five weeks, somewhere up in there. After uh, she passed away, did you, um, was there a funeral? Yes. And after the funeral, did people go to somebody's house and visit like people do? Yes. At any point in time during that funeral or thereabouts, did you have a conversation with the defendant? Over there? Yes. And what? Objecting to questions by Mr. Water that respond with a yes or a no. Those are typically leading questions. Not that I'm concerned about these questions. I just don't want my lack of objection to lead to somebody's belief that he can ask questions that respond with a yes or a no. Thank Mr. Waters. I think my question did not suggest the answer. It said, did you have a conversation? And my next question was, what was that conversation? So what was that question, right, excuse me, what was that conversation you had with the defendant at, at the funeral or thereabouts? Um, if I remember correctly, um, I'm gonna kind of take care of you boys and kind of, you know. He was gonna do what, I'm sorry? Take care of you boys. All right. Did he say how he was gonna do that? Uh, partially, yes. And what did he say? Um, he was going to file a claim against his insurance company. He was going to what? File a claim against his insurance company. His insurance company? Yes. Did uh, he say how much coverage there was? Uh, like 505000 I believe. 505000 Yes. And did he say anything about how much money you may receive? Um, the goal was to get me and my brother Brian at least $100,000 a piece. And did, did any other bills need to be taken care of? Uh, the medical bills. 
For who? My mom. When he told you that, did you agree to do that? Yes. Did you view the defendant as your lawyer? Yes. Did you go and meet with him about it? Yes. Did he tell you about what to do with any paperwork you may receive? Um, any paperwork or bills or anything, just send them to him. Can I have the Elmo, please? No objection subject to our previously made objection. All right. Is, is that something you're offering into evidence? I'm going to show it to the witness, but yes, sir. Yeah, I'll offer uh, States 372 in evidence. So. No objection. And submit it without objection. Um, let me ask you this. So did you agree to let the defendant go forward with this claim? Yes. And I'm going to I'd asked you whether or not what he told you to do about paperwork, and I'm going to show you what's been marked as Exhibit 372 to your testimony. Do you recognize that? Yes. Tell the jury what that is, please. Um, this is a cover sheet that I sent him with, uh, I believe behind it was like a hospital bill and um, some kind of other important paperwork. Okay. So you had received some paperwork in the mail? Yes. And did you handwrite this? I did. All right. And who did you send this to? Alex Murdoch. Tell the jury quickly what this is about. Can you see it on the screen? I can bring it back to you if you need it. Okay. Um, so this is a cover sheet that I attached to the documents that I sent um, Alex. Okay. And what kind of documents? Do you remember what kind they were? Um, one was a hospital bill and one was from the trailer company, I believe. I don't recall exactly what it was. The trailer company for who? Um, my mom. For your mom. And the hospital bill for who? Yes, my mom. Your mom? Um, and you sent these to him because they were relevant to the case? Yes. At any point in time, did you, as this case was developing, did you go and meet with the defendant at his office? Uh, yes. Did he have any paperwork for you? Yes. Did he get you to sign some paperwork? Yes. Did you become the personal representative of your mom's estate? I did. And who gave you the paperwork to sign for that? Alex. When you signed that paperwork, were you aware that there had already been a leading? Okay. Can't leave the witness. At some point in time, did Alex say he wanted to involve another lawyer? Uh, yes. And who was that? Corey Fleming. And what did he tell you about that? Um, if I understood it correctly, I'm going to send you to um, Corey Fleming my friend, um, because I can't do it yet. You know, do the claim against myself because it would be a conflict of interest. That's how I understood it. Right. And did you ultimately meet with Corey Fleming? Uh, yes. How many times did you meet with him? Um, if I recall correctly, maybe once or twice. Over the course of this case, if you had a question, who would you call? Alex. At some point, did the defendant, Alec, have a conversation with you about letting someone else be PR? Yes. And what was that conversation? Um, that I should let somebody else be PR because based on he's a businessman and it would be hard for the insurance to go up against somebody like that. Okay. And who told you that? Alex. And what did you say to that? Yes. All right. And did, who was, did somebody else get involved at this point? Yes. And who was that? Uh, the PR, Chad Westendorf. At that point in time, did you sign any paperwork for him to become PR? Chad? I did. All right. And who brought you that paperwork? Uh, I believe I signed it at Alice's office or either I went to the bank. I can't recall. And at that point in time, were you aware of any recovery in the case? No. Were you aware a recovery had already been received in the case? No. 
Did anyone at that time tell you there was already $505,000 that had been recovered? No. That's not in evidence. I mean, he's just throwing these numbers and times out. There's nothing in, in the record to indicate when it was received or how it was dispersed. I object. I asked him, Your Honor, I'm yes. sorry. I asked him if he was aware of that. I think that's relevant. Aware of something that no one's said happened? I mean, I would object. Restate, rephrase your question, please. Did Alec tell you there had been a recovery of $505,000 already in the case at that time? No. Did he ever tell you there had been a recovery of $505,000 at that time? No. Was there a recovery at that time of $505,000 as you come to find out? Uh, later on. Later on you found out? Yes. And did he ever pay you one dime? No. Who was the PR that the defendant talked to you about and pointing instead of you? I'm um, Chad Westendorf. Did you ever meet with him? Uh, yes, like once or twice. Did he ever tell you about a $505,000 settlement that already had occurred? No. Did the defendant ever tell you that he also had a $5 million umbrella policy? No. Did he ever tell you that there had been a recovery against that? No. Did he ever tell you that there had been a recovery for $3.8 million against that? No. Did he ever pay you one penny of $3.8 million? No. As the months went on and moving into the early part of June 2021, would you periodically have conversations with Alec about the case? Yes. How often do you think you would talk to Alec? Uh, every three to four months, give and take. And you recall what Alec would tell you about the case? Uh, yes. Um, first it started off, you know, the hard case, and then it was like it was making progress. Say that again. Um, at first it started off as the, it was going to be a hard case, and then it turned into we're making progress. You're making progress. Yes. And what had the defendant told you about the most that you could recover? What did he tell you at least? Nothing. I'm going to show you what's been marked as State's Exhibit 463 to your testimony and see if you recognize that document. Uh, yes, I do. And what are those? These are text messages between me and Alex. Okay. Your Honor, at this time I would move State's 463 and that 453, excuse me, into evidence. Subject to previous objections, no objection. Okay, it's admitted. All right, I'm going to put this up on the screen and kind of zoom it in. Uh, you got a screen over there, but if you can't see it because the writing's kind of small, you let me know and I'll bring it to you, okay? Do you recognize that that's on the screen right now? Yes. And who is that text from? Uh, Alex. And who is it to? Me. And can you read to the jury what that text says? Um, it says, hey man, just checking in, been working on case and made me think about you. Hope all is good. Call me anytime I can help. And what was the date of that text? Uh, April 12, 2021 at 1247. All right. I'm going to go to this next one. Do you recognize that text? Yes. And who is that from? Um, that is from me to Alex responding to his text. All right. And tell, read that text to the jury once you sent. Um, that text says, hey man, I'm doing good. By the way, how's the case going? Just curious, but how are you? I'll show you this next text. Do you recognize that? Yes. And who is that from? That is from Alex to me. All right, and can you read that to the jury? Finally getting some movement, still a ways to go. Doing good, was just thinking about and thought I'd check in. Hope to see you soon. Still a ways to go is what he said? Yes. At that point in time, did he tell you there had already been two recoveries in the case? No. Go 
Going to this last text, what is that? Who is that from? Um, that is um, from me, back to Alex, responding to his text. All right, and what, is, what does it say? Um, cool, thanks. Objection, I'm going to strike out one of the phone numbers on here so it can't be viewed. That's correct, Your Around this point in time, as we're in the spring, late spring of 2021, uh, had you become aware of any media reporting about there actually being a settlement in your mother's case? Uh, yes, yeah, somebody sent me a text or something saying a legal document, but I can't remember who sent it to me. All right. And you can't remember who sent it to you? Yes, that's correct. Um, did that cause you to reach out to the defendant and ask the status of the case? Yes. Do you remember roughly when that was? Uh, I believe in June. Okay. And do you, do you remember if that was before or after the murders in this particular case? Um, I believe that was after. Okay. And have you seen some records since, your, uh, since the previous time I'm talking about this? Uh, previous to the call, no. Show you what's been marked is uh, 454 to your testimony. Is that some records you've been provided? Yes. And uh, those just some records of phone calls between you and Alec? Yes. On June 22nd? Yes. you have any uh, would you periodically reach out to the defendant and get updates about the case uh, yes and you had family reach out and ask you to get updates because of reading things in the media is that correct that is correct and you had conversations with him in June of 2021 yes you don't remember if those were before or after the murders he already answered the question after June 7th I would object to the leading question I would object to the suggestion that he hasn't already answered that this occurred after June 7 2021 he's impeaching his own witness I think I'm establishing a point that's not in dispute these records say what they say I'm talking I think he was prefacing that question with you don't you don't remember when you learned about it sometime in early June if if he Conceding the witness said he didn't um, learn about it until after June 7th, we don't have an argument. He's already testified to that. Final speaking response. Your Honor, this uh, witness has testified he had a conversation in June. He's testified in the spring of 2021 that he became aware of media reports and reached out to him. We've already seen some texts and we have some calls. I'm just following up on the fact that he had repeated communications with the defendant asking him what uh, this is the status of my case and was told as we move in time to the murders, oh, everything's fine, I'm still working on it. Sustain as the leading the witness. Thank you. For thanking you. It's just a habit I got in and I can't seem to break it. I 
apologize. And by the way, if you'd ruled against me, I would still say thank you. It's just <laughs> what I've learned to do. I don't know whether it's an old time thing or not. I'm going to apologize. All right. Thank you, Mr. Arbor. <laughs> just to clear this up, how often would you talk to the defendant? Uh, three to four times a year or something, I believe. I can't recall. Every few months. Would you talk by phone or would you talk by text or both? Um, both. And when you would talk to him, would you ask about the status of your case? Yes. And each time you talked to him, what did he say? Um, it was making progress. Making progress. Did he say it was a hard case or not? Uh, yes. Did he ever tell you about how much money he might be able to get for you? Um, the goal was to get 100000 apiece for me and my brother. At any time over the years, did he ever tell you that there had already been a recovery in the case? No. At any time over the years, did he mention anything about having a $5 million umbrella policy? No. At any time, did he ever pay you one penny? No. You um, testified earlier that you became the personal representative, is that right? That is correct. Why were you the personal representative and not your brother? Uh, because my brother is a vulnerable adult man and he had the disability. Um, that my brother, he's a vulnerable adult, so he's not able to function as a normal human being to be he's, doing stuff like that. He's a vulnerable adult? Yes. After the murders happened, at some point after that, it's, did you go seek or did you and your family go seek additional representation about this matter? Uh, yes. And who did y'all eventually go to? Uh, we, my aunt and my uncle went to Mark Tinsley and then they sent us to Eric Bland. And are you aware of there being a confession of judgment in your case against the defendant for those missing recoveries? Yes. There's a confession to judgment in that case? Yes. Did you have to file a claim against the defendant for those two recoveries you never got for your mom's case? Yes. And I'm going to show you 352. You're not a lawyer, are you? No. And you, have you read all that, all that legal stuff in there? Yes. All right. But this has been something that you're aware of that occurred in your case. Is that correct? That is correct. And ultimately, there's a confession of judgment. In the case, do you know how much it is right there? Um, Four million three hundred and five thousand dollars. Right. And is that for three point eight million dollars for one of them? Yes. And for five hundred and five thousand dollars for the other recovery? Yes. When the defendant came to you around the time of your mom's funeral and said he was going to help you and file a claim on your behalf, why did you agree to that? Because I trusted him. Thank you. Nothing further. Examination. Please support your honor. Yes. Your name is Tony. Yes, sir. May I call you Tony rather than Mr. Satterfield? Absolutely. 
plumbing bit instead of Mr. Arpizzi, and then we'll make this a little quicker between your name and my name. It might add a little bit to this cross. So uh, let me ask you a few questions about um, your mother's death, and I apologize if in any way this um, brings back bad memories. I apologize. You all filed a lawsuit or made a claim against, I mean, basically Alec told you he would be the defendant. You'd be suing him, right? Yes. Okay. And it was based on some dogs tripping your mom as she was going down the stairs. Is that right? Uh, that's what they said, yes. Okay. And, but the only person that, that represented dogs trip, tripped your mother going down the stairs was Alex, right? Yes. Okay. So uh, without his assertion, I mean, if she just fell down the stairs, there'd be no lawsuit, right? Uh, I guess that's okay, correct. Okay, I'm sorry. You're not a lawyer. You would accept my representations if she just fell down the stairs of her on her own. There would be no one to blame for that. Right? All right. Repeat your question because I don't understand the question. It's okay. Strike it. Withdraw it. It's going down a rabbit hole. Don't need to do that. So um, let me ask you this. Um, during this process, your lawyer, for the record, he told you, was Corey Fleming, right? Yes. And that's, that was your lawyer? Well, it was Alex Murdoch. They were all a team. They were a team. The person being sued, and yeah. again, you're not sophisticated on this, um, was part of the team to get you a recovery. Yes. Okay. Now, there's a guy named Chad Westendorf. He was with a bank, right? Yes. And he was actually the PR. He, he took over, and it was his job to make sure you all got your money, right? Yes. Did you ever meet with him? Yes. And what did he say? Like one time, it was just a sign to paperwork for him to be PR. Right. And did you ever call him and say, what's going on with my case? No. Did you ever call Corey Fleming and ask what's going on with my case? No. And um, is, uh, let me make sure I understand your testimony. You've, re you've got some notice or something in the paper, and at some point after June 7th, you had either a phone call or a text or an email with Alec Murdoch asking him what's going on, right? Yes. Now, um, and again, we see a series of phone calls on June 22nd. Yes. Second, yes. Is that right? Um, where y'all were talking about this. Yes. But was there anything on June 7th or prior to June 7th where you accused him of anything? Accused uh, prior him to June 7th, no. Okay. Now, um, after you became aware of um, Well, we saw just a moment ago um, a confession of judgment where Alec Murdaugh admitted that he owed you three million, I not get this wrong, where's the confession of judgment? There it is. Four million, three hundred and five thousand, is that right? That's the judgment, yes. Okay. Um, but you hired a lawyer. Um, Eric Bland, a very fine lawyer, and he actually sued um, Mr. Murdoch's firm and some other folks and got you $6.5 million, right? Yes, or no, not that I'm aware of. Pardon me? Not that I'm aware of. The only thing I'm aware of is the judgment. <laughs> so Mr. Bland didn't tell you about the $6.5 million? Yes. Okay, I'm sorry. I just want to make sure history's not repeating itself here. Um, and so you actually recovered $6.5 million, which would be a couple million dollars more than you would have gotten had you received the money that Alex uh, took, right? Uh, yes. Okay. So you've been made more than whole for that loss? Uh, yes. Two million more than you would have gotten had he not taken your money, right? Okay, yes. Okay. Um, now, sort of the, the, the last question uh, that I think I have for you, but let me check with my co-counsel before I Well, one last question is this. Um, on June 7th, prior to June 7th, prior to June 8th, had you ever th threatened 
Alec Murdoch with exposure. All right, could you repeat your question again? Prior, Prior to June 8th, 2021, did you ever threaten Alec Murdoch saying, I know you stole my money. Where's my money? You know, I know you've got the money. Did, he, did you threaten him in any way? No. Okay. Thank you. I have no further questions. <laughs> Thank you. Going back to, uh, excuse me, give the right exhibit. States 453, these were texts that you had about the case, is that right? Yes. And when did those occur? Uh, these occurred in the spring in April of 2021. April of 2021. And there had been media reporting about there being a settlement in this particular case, even though you hadn't received any money? Yes. Did you have periodic conversations with the defendant over the course of time? Yes. And would you ask him about the case? Yes. And he would tell you what? It's a hard case, but we're, it's a work in progress. All right. After all this happened, have you come to find out that the defendant took all of your money? Yes. And that's what led to that confession of judgment? Yes. Did, it, did he, though, ever pay you one cent? No. You were asked about Corey Fleming, and I think you said they were all a team. Is that yes. right? Yes, yes. At its core, who did you consider was your lawyer for your mom's case? Alex. Thank you, Mr. Sackler. Nothing further. He may have one more question. Anything further? No. Thank you. All right. You may step down. Thank you.